Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation on endocrine disorders. I'm excited to guide you through this important topic. Let's dive in and explore the fascinating world of hormones and their impact on our health. The endocrine system is a complex network of glands that secrete hormones, acting as chemical messengers. These hormones travel through the bloodstream, influencing various bodily functions. Many endocrine processes involve a coordinated effort between the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and target organs. Here's a look at the pituitary gland, often called the master gland. The anterior pituitary releases hormones like growth hormone, prolactin, ACTH, TSH, FSH, and LH, each with specific roles. The posterior pituitary stores and releases ADH and oxytocin, which are crucial for fluid balance and social bonding. Hormone regulation is vital for maintaining homeostasis. Negative feedback mechanisms prevent overproduction of hormones, like thyroid hormones suppressing TSH. Receptor activity also plays a role, with upregulation increasing sensitivity and downregulation decreasing it. This diagram illustrates the intricate relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus regulates the pituitary, which in turn releases hormones that affect various organs. This feedback loop ensures precise hormonal control. Hormone disorders can be categorized into deficiencies, excesses, and resistance. Deficiencies can arise from gland destruction or autoimmune issues. Excesses are often due to tumors or autoimmune responses. Resistance usually has a genetic basis, affecting hormone receptors. Endocrine dysfunction can manifest as hypofunction, meaning too little hormone, or hyperfunction, meaning too much. Dysfunction can occur at three levels, the endocrine gland itself, primary, the pituitary, secondary, or the hypothalamus, tertiary. Several factors can cause endocrine dysfunction. Autoimmune disorders can lead to either hyperfunction or hyperfunction. Neoplasia, or tumors, can also disrupt hormone production. Endocrine-disrupting compounds in the environment can interfere with hormone function as well. Hypopituitarism refers to the deficiency of one or more pituitary hormones. In rare cases, it can lead to panhypopituitarism, a complete loss of all pituitary hormones. Understanding the specific hormone deficiencies is crucial for diagnosis and management. The causes of hypopituitarism are varied. Primary adenomas, benign tumors, are the most common cause. Infarction or hemorrhage, especially in Sheehan's syndrome after postpartum hemorrhage, can also damage the gland. Traumatic brain injury and hypothalamic dysfunction are other potential causes. The signs and symptoms of hypopituitarism depend on which hormones are affected. Adrenal insufficiency, hypothyroidism, and diabetes insipidus are serious concerns. The age of onset also influences the presentation, and acute cases can lead to rapid deterioration. In neonates and infants, hypopituitarism can manifest as dwarfism, developmental delay, and neurological symptoms. In adults, it can cause weakness, weight changes, hypotension, sluggishness, and excessive urination. Recognizing these diverse symptoms is key for early diagnosis. Diagnosing hypopituitarism involves blood tests to assess hormone levels. The corticotropin stimulation test helps differentiate between pituitary and adrenal problems. MRI or CT scans can identify structural abnormalities in the pituitary gland. Diabetes insipidus, DI, results from a lack of ADH or a failure to respond to it. This leads to the production of dilute large volume urine. Central DI is due to a lack of ADH from the posterior pituitary, while nephrogenic DI is due to kidney resistance to ADH. Symptoms of DI include frequent urination, thirst, dehydration, and disorientation, 
Blood tests show high osmolarity and hyponatremia, while urine tests show low osmolarity and specific gravity. Treatment for central DI involves ADH administration. Remember, DI is distinct from diabetes mellitus as there is no hyperglycemia. Hyperpituitarism is often caused by a pituitary tumor. Large tumors can cause headaches and visual disturbances due to their proximity to the optic nerves. Prolactinomas produce prolactin, while GH-secreting tumors cause gigantism in children and acromegaly in adults. Diagnosing hyperpituitarism involves measuring serum and urine hormone levels. The dexamethasone suppression test assesses ACTH response. Treatment depends on the specific hormone involved and may include bromocryptine for prolactinomas, surgery, adrenal enzyme inhibitors, or GH inhibitors, CYADH, or syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, is characterized by excessive ADH release. This can be caused by brain injury, certain cancers, or surgery. It leads to fluid retention, concentrated urine, dilute plasma, and hypervolemia. Treatment involves fluid restriction and, in some cases, ADH receptor antagonists. The thyroid gland produces T3 and T4, which regulate body metabolism. Iodine is essential for thyroid hormone synthesis. Thyroid disorders are more common in women, and primary thyroid disorders are the most frequent. An enlarged thyroid or goiter can indicate either hypo or hyperfunction. Goiter refers to the enlargement of the thyroid gland. Goitrogens, substances that promote thyroid enlargement, can contribute to goiter development. Recognizing potential goitrogenic factors in diet and environment is important. Hypothyroidism, or underactive thyroid, can be caused by Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune disorder. Other causes include drugs, genetics, thyroiditis, and congenital hypothyroidism. Identifying the underlying cause is crucial for effective management. Symptoms of hypothyroidism include cold intolerance, weight gain, lethargy, fatigue, and memory deficits. Other symptoms include muscle cramps, constipation, decreased fertility, puffy face, hair loss, and brittle nails. Recognizing these diverse symptoms is key for early diagnosis. Hypothyroidism has systemic effects. It can lead to hyperlipidemia, anemia, and altered cardiac, pulmonary, and renal function. It can also cause altered appearance, such as yellow-orange skin and a puffy face. Severe hypothyroidism in adults can lead to myxedema, while elderly individuals may experience subclinical hypothyroidism with disorientation and depression. Diagnosing hypothyroidism involves assessing TSH and free T3 and T4 levels. In primary hypothyroidism, TSH is high, while T3 and T4 are low. In secondary hypothyroidism, all three are low. Hashimoto's thyroiditis can be confirmed by detecting antithyroglobulin, and antithyroperoxidase antibodies. Ultrasound can also be helpful. Treatment for hypothyroidism involves replacement hormone therapy, typically with levothyroxine. Surgical intervention may be necessary in some cases. Untreated hypothyroidism can lead to myxedema coma, a severe and potentially fatal condition. Hypothyroidism, also known as thyrotoxicosis, is characterized by excessive T3 and T4 levels. Graves' disease and autoimmune disorder is the most common cause. Other causes include thyroiditis, thyroid adenoma, excessive TSH, toxic multinodular goiter, excessive iodine ingestion, and pregnancy. Symptoms of hyperthyroidism include nervousness, insomnia, sensitivity to heat, and weight loss. Other symptoms include an enlarged thyroid gland, atrial fibrillation, increased heart rate, and exophthalmos, a characteristic bulging of the eyes. Thyroid dermopathy or pretibial myxedema can also occur. Diagnosing hyperthyroidism involves assessing TSH and free T3 and T4 levels. 
in primary hypothyroidism, TSH is low, while T3 and T4 are high. In secondary hypothyroidism, all three are high. Antibodies for Graves' disease can be detected. Ultrasound and radioactive iodine scanning can also be helpful. Treatment for hypothyroidism includes antithyroid hormone medication, such as pro PTU. Radioactive iodine treatment is another option. Surgery may be necessary in some cases, and if the gland is removed, lifelong levothyroxine replacement is needed. Thyroid storm is a life-threatening thyrotoxic crisis. It involves an overwhelming release of thyroid hormones, leading to high fever, tachycardia, agitation, and psychosis. It is often precipitated by surgery or trauma and requires immediate medical attention. This slide provides a helpful comparison of the symptoms of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism is associated with symptoms like weight gain, fatigue, and feeling cold, while hyperthyroidism is associated with symptoms like weight loss, anxiety, and feeling warm. The parathyroid glands, typically four pea-sized glands located on the posterior thyroid, secrete parathyroid hormone, PTH. PTH is released when blood calcium levels are low. It activates bone resorption and increases intestinal calcium absorption by the kidneys. Hypoparathyroidism is a rare condition often caused by inadvertent damage during thyroid surgery or genetic disorders. It leads to hypocalcemia, which can manifest as Trousseau's sign, Chvostek's sign, muscle cramps, tetany, and convulsions. Treatment involves PTH replacement and normalization of serum calcium. Hyperparathyroidism is characterized by elevated PTH levels. Primary hyperparathyroidism is usually due to a parathyroid adenoma, leading to elevated PTH and calcium levels. Secondary hyperparathyroidism is caused by conditions that lead to hypocalcemia, such as chronic kidney disease. Symptoms of hyperparathyroidism are primarily due to excess calcium. These include muscle weakness, poor concentration, neuropathies, kidney stones, osteopenia, and pathological fractures. Treatment options include surgery and measures to reduce serum calcium levels. The adrenal gland located on top of the kidney has two main parts, the cortex and the medulla. The adrenal cortex produces glucocorticoids, cortisol, androgens, and mineralocorticoids, aldosterone. The adrenal medulla produces epinephrine and norepinephrine. Adrenal insufficiency can be secondary due to decreased ACTH or primary, as in Addison's disease. Addison's disease involves autoimmune destruction of the adrenal cortex. Antibodies to the adrenal cortex and steroid enzymes may be present. Hypoadrenalism can also be caused by exogenous glucocorticoids. Prolonged glucocorticoid use suppresses CRF-AKTH signals to the adrenal cortex, leading to receptor downregulation. Steroid usage should not be abruptly stopped, and the smallest effective dosage should be used to minimize adrenal atrophy. Symptoms of hypoadrenalism include weakness, hypotension, easy fatigue, and emotional lability. Other symptoms include anorexia, hypoglycemia, electrolyte imbalances, and a tanned appearance due to melanocyte-stimulating hormone, MSH. In women, loss of pubic and axillary hair and amenorrhea can occur. Diagnosing hypoadrenalism involves the rapid ACTH test. Cortisol should rise within 30 minutes of ACTH administration. No cortisol rise indicates adrenal cortex insufficiency. Treatment involves daily replacement of glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid with parenteral steroid coverage during times of stress. Hyperadrenalism or hypercortisolism can be Cushing's disease or Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's disease is caused by a pituitary tumor leading to elevated ACTH. 
Cushing's syndrome is characterized by elevated cortisol and hyperfunction of the adrenal cortex. Exogenous steroids are the most common cause of Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's disease is caused by a pituitary tumor that produces excessive ACTH. Cushing's syndrome can be caused by adrenal hyperplasia, adrenal tumors, ectopic ACTH secretion from tumors, or administration of exogenous corticosteroids. Symptoms of hyperadrenalism include weight gain and redistribution of body fat to the face, trunk, and abdomen, a puffy face called moon faces, and extra subcutaneous fat in the cervicothoracic area called buffalo hump are characteristic. Other symptoms include striae, easy bruising, and hirsutism in women. This diagram illustrates the various symptoms of Cushing's syndrome including emotional lability, moon faces, acne, hirsutism, hypertension, central obesity, purple striae, amenorrhea, buffalo hump, osteoporosis, immunosuppression, muscle weakness, and poor wound healing. High cortisol levels have several effects. They block the action of insulin, leading to glucose intolerance and hyperglycemia. They inhibit bone formation and accelerate bone reabsorption, leading to osteopenia and osteoporosis. They also suppress the immune response and cause hypertension. Diagnosing hyperadrenalism involves measuring serum cortisol levels, salivary cortisol levels, and 24-hour urine cortisol. The dexamethasone suppression test is also used. MRI and CT scans can help identify tumors. Treatment for hyperadrenalism may involve surgery to remove tumors. Ketoconazole can be used to suppress cortisol production. The overall goal is to reduce cortisol levels and alleviate symptoms. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor of the adrenal medulla that secretes norepinephrine and epinephrine. This leads to excessive sympathetic stimulation, resulting in hypertension, tremors, increased cardiac contractility, cardiac arrhythmias, and tachycardia. Diagnosis involves a 24-hour urine test for catecholamine metabolites. Thank you for watching this presentation on endocrine disorders. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Please subscribe, like, and share this video to help others learn about this important topic.